Welcome to the Forbidden West, a land where arid deserts meet lush rainforests and the relics of a fallen civilization whisper tales of a past long forgotten. Join us as we unravel the secrets of this altered world and witness the extraordinary machines that now reign supreme, adapting and thriving amidst the ruins. This is their dominion, their machine kingdom. The Isle of Spires, far in the Forbidden West. Here nature has reclaimed the remnants of the city that was once called San Francisco, creating a unique and awe-inspiring landscape. Seagulls soar above the abandoned streets, their calls echoing through the silence. The towering Transamerica Pyramid, once a symbol of human achievement, stands as a solitary sentinel amidst the encroaching wilderness. Beyond the city's edge, the restless waves crash upon the deserted coast, sculpting the sands with every unrelenting tide. Amongst the crumbling concrete and rusting metal, new inhabitants have emerged. Close to the ruins of the iconic Golden Gate Bridge, a massive slaughter spine, an apex predator of the machine world, patrols the beaches, instilling fear in any who dare to challenge it. With a design reminiscent of the fearsome Spinosaurus of the late Cretaceous era, the slaughter spine roams the shores with an imposing presence. Its long, slender snout and the shape of the split jaw harken back to its ancient inspiration, while the heavy armor plating lining his spine protects it against most threats. But it is the massive saw-bladed sail that truly sets this machine apart. A formidable weapon and a sight to behold. But there's another machine inhabiting this beach, a watcher. With its fine-tuned sensors and a flexible neck, this small recon machine keeps a constant vigil, scanning the area for potential dangers. Its disproportionately large head is equipped with a highly sensitive ocular sensor array, enabling it to detect even the slightest movement or disturbance along the coastline. Not far from here, on the eastern shore of the island, our exploration takes us to the former port of San Francisco, with its submerged ferry building. Here an extraordinary machine thrives in the watery depths. Behold the Tide Ripper, a large amphibious machine reminiscent of the ancient plesiosaur. As it swims gracefully amidst the ruins, its powerful limbs propel it effortlessly through the water. Like many of its larger machine brethren, the Tide Ripper leads a predominantly solitary existence. It seeks refuge in the vastness of lakes and the open ocean, where it gracefully filters sediment for the valuable resources it's tasked with acquiring. As a creature of the waters, it is rare to witness a Tide Ripper on dry land. Yet, every now and then it will cautiously venture onto shore, revealing its enormous size. As the flipper-like appendages bear the weight of the colossal body, its movements may appear somewhat awkward, yet there is an undeniable grace in its rhythmic waddle. We return to the ocean, where rusty cars and street lamps, now drowned relics of a bygone time, create a striking juxtaposition with the once bustling streets. The corals have claimed them as their canvas now, painting the buildings with vibrant patterns or turning them into surreal underwater sculptures. Amongst the swaying strands of seaweed, we come face to face with another formidable machine that lurks in these depths, the menacing Snapmore. Its presence a reminder that the Forbidden West is not a place for the faint of heart. While not as colossal as the Tider Ripper, the Snapmore is still quite large compared to humans. Its formidable crocodilian physique, the chainsaw-like lower mandible, and the icy depths of its chill water-filled gullet leave no doubt about its relentless hunting capabilities. With its powerful frame cutting through the water, it patrols the flooded ruins with remarkable agility. 
but the Snapmore's dominion extends beyond the ocean. Emerging from the water's embrace, it ventures onto the beach, its massive body casting an imposing shadow on the sand. Basking under the warm glow of the sun, these snap moors utilize their solar panels to help power their impressive array of offensive and defensive capabilities. But there's something else going on. As it rests on the beach, the snap moor starts a purification process that transcends the boundaries of steel and circuitry. With unwavering commitment, it diligently dismantles toxins and meticulously extracts minerals from the water and soil, harmonizing the delicate balance of their aquatic habitat. Further inland, another slaughter spine guards the ancient ruins of a place once known as Grace Cathedral. In this clearing, the size difference between the hunter killer and its lookout is even more apparent. As it continues on its route through the narrow passageways of this sacred site, the slaughter spine moves with a sense of purpose, the buildings trembling as it passes by. Here, the concrete jungle has surrendered its dominion to a wild forest, and the echoes of a long lost civilization have been replaced by a symphony of rustling leaves and chirping birds. Amidst the cracks in the pavement, defiant trees emerge, reclaiming their rightful place. Rays of sunlight filter through the canopy, painting the remnants of a bygone era with enchanting patterns of light and shade. Close by, a herd of fanghorn machines roams freely. Resembling the majestic stag with their wide branch-like horns, these mechanical grazers have adapted to the changing landscape. Though their appearance may be similar to their spiritual predecessors from a thousand years ago, fanghorns possess heightened perception, scanning their surroundings with their two optical sensors for potential threats. As acquisition class machines, they dissolve natural resources and convert them into biofuel, which is then stored in the canisters on its back. Presumably, their horns are also used to disintegrate root systems and other combustible biomass underground. Fang horns are social creatures, often found in herds. They navigate the coastal forests with cautious grace, ever watchful for signs of danger. Anticipate their movement! However, unlike most machines, their skittish nature will have them often fleeing rather than engaging in combat. As we journey further east, we reach the Long Coast, a stunning stretch of land formerly known as the Pacific coastline of Big Sur, California. Towering cliffs rise above sandy beaches, their beauty only surpassed by the grandeur of the snow-capped mountains to the north. A dilapidated bridge, seemingly ready to collapse at any moment, is one of the few man-made structures to be found in this remote part of the coast. Here, where the waves caress the land, a group of Widemore have gathered at a serene beach previously called McWay Cove. With calculated precision, these hippo-like machines traverse the landscape, their impressive tusks churning the earth. Resembling giant plows, they break down the soil and vegetation, processing it into metal fertilizer pods. These pods are then ejected and dispersed along the beach, rejuvenating the ground. By doing this, the Widemore help to detoxify both water and mud, and fostering a thriving habitat for a variety of smaller species. As our expedition takes us further south, we arrive at the archipelago of Los Angeles. Countless earthquakes and volcanic activity have shaped this former hub for the entertainment and technology industries into a fragmented maze of small islands. Where thin veins of glowing lava meet the ocean, they give birth to a new name for this remarkable place, the Burning Shores. 
The Capitol Records building, once an icon of human creativity, now stands enshrouded by nature, its weathered facade obscured by foliage. The Hollywood sign looms in the distance, entwined by the embrace of a colossal Horus Titan, its lifeless tentacles and massive hull frozen in time, serving as an eerie reminder of the fall of man. Close to the remnants of LAX and its watery graveyard of rusty plains, we encounter our first flying machine. This is the water wing, a nimble predator of the skies and the seas. Its sleek design, reminiscent of a pelican, allows it to dive deep underwater and pursue its enemies with unwavering determination. Water wings serve a crucial purpose in this particular ecosystem. They collect soil and disperse the processed nutrients with their wing filters once they're in the water. As they dive into the depths, they leave ephemeral trails of vibrant green clouds in their wake. These trailing hues will soon initiate the blooming of remarkable algal colonies, essential for nurturing the abundant marine life that thrives in these waters. Passing by a flock of sun wings circling the remnants of partially collapsed skyscrapers, we arrive at the former Griffith Observatory, overlooking the nearby coastline. Previously an attraction for tourists inquisitive about the universe, it is now the backdrop for a spectacle much more down to earth. In the shade of the towering cliff, we encounter two giant machines and their small but numerous helpers. These are bile gut, giant toad-like acquisition machines tasked with unearthing precious materials and metals. Salvage sites like these are ripe with the promise of forgotten riches. In order to access them, the bile gut disperses sting spawn pods and sprays a potent acidic substance across the ground, unveiling the hidden scrap metal treasures concealed beneath the surface. As the sting spawn hatch and take to the skies, their purpose becomes clear. With their tiny engines, they flutter around, tirelessly collecting the buried metal fragments. In a move reminiscent to that of his extinct relatives, the bile gut uses his retractable harpoon-like tongue to snatch the sting spawn mid-flight and starts processing their precious cargo into resources for the cauldron network. Across the sea, back at the Isle of Spires, we navigate the meandering waterways, passing by broken cable cars and palm trees swaying in the breeze. Here, where the cityscape converges with the untamed ocean, we get a glimpse of our final machine. Further out amidst the waves, we spot the majestic Tallneck, a gentle giant defying the currents. This reconnaissance machine, usually found on land, gracefully navigates the waters, its towering form reminiscent of a giraffe. But unlike the head of this long extinct mammal, the Tallneck's head is broad and disc-shaped, devoid of visible optical sensors. Embedded within is a data node that constantly gathers information about its surroundings, serving as a vital communication center for other machines within its region. Harmless to humans, the Tallneck moves gracefully along its predefined circular path, seemingly oblivious to the world around it. With a measured gait, it traverses its watery domain a silent observer of the ever-changing landscape. As the sun bids its farewell, a mesmerizing spectacle unfolds before our eyes. The warm glow of the fading light envelops the remnants of San Francisco, painting a breathtaking silhouette of the city skyline and the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to support us on Patreon.